When we look at Ubuntu for Android, we find that there are a couple of solutions already available in the market, most notably being Motorola's WebTop OS. So how different is Ubuntu for Android from those solutions? Sure, so the, the WebTop um, service that was been launched, I think, maybe one or two, at least a year ago with the Motorola, um, it's based on a similar kind of capability where the phone is uh, docked, um, but the desktop is very, very basic. So essentially what you would get by docking um, that phone, the service that would be um, invoked is, is basically just a browsing capability. Um, with the Ubuntu for Android solution, what is being made available by docking the phone onto a desktop display is an entire operating system, PC operating system. And it's, exact, and it's based on exactly the same operating system that is currently shipped on the many millions of um, laptop hardware devices. So what, what you're getting is a full operational PC system with the Ubuntu for Android service versus with the, um, the, the WebTop service from, from the Motorola was a very basic UI allowing you to just browse the internet. So a, a big difference in terms of the level of capability. Um, also, we, don't, we, we think that the, um, the ability for what, what we're what, what we're trying to um, discuss with handset manufacturers with the Ubuntu for Android service is that by incorporating a full desktop capability alongside with a very efficient smartphone capability, um, you actually have far a, a much better basis to sell phones as a product productivity tool to high-end enterprise users because they're getting the full range of applications that they would be used to using on a normal desktop. What kind of market do you see for Ubuntu for Android, especially in the, in the enterprise segment? I think many enterprises um, will look at this particular solution and look at its advantages in terms of offering particular business users that are very, very mobile, that um, would want very easy access to enterprise applications. Um, so the flexibility um, and also uh, in, in terms of cost because there's less cost associated with the solution in terms of comparing it to an expensive laptop for example. So looking at the advantage of this solution there is better flexibility in terms of pure mobility. Um, there is um, there is a certain cost advantages for enterprises as well um, and it's a, it's a very straightforward solution so the Ubuntu desktop is currently deployed in very many enterprises. It's, it's very well regarded as, as being um, a desktop um, computing system for enterprises, which means that it's very well understood by IT, IT management. Um, it has very high levels of security. So in many ways, it, it actually um, doesn't detract too far from um, how enterprise uh, man IT managers, for example, would want to um, uh, man manage their, it's, 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 it's basically the same systems that are being, that are being deployed. Um, but available simply in a smartphone con um, context rather than rather than a laptop context. How is this going to work? Means will there be Ubuntu for Android available on the internet, which people can just download and install on their smartphones, or are you working with the, the smartphone manufacturers and Ubuntu for Android will come pre-installed uh, on the phones? Okay, so the prototype has been developed for us to engage directly with handset manufacturers. So. There are a number of integration points that um, are very specific around um, user experience and hardware performance, which means that the most effective way in which the solution can be uh, enabled within um, a smartphone hardware is by working directly with handset manufacturers, which means it's integrated as source um, and shipped as part of the smartphone. Um, at this stage, it's not something that's available to download and install on different types of hardware simply because there are very specific hardware requirements, um, which would mean it would, be, um, it would be too difficult for a user to install and expect to run um, the service as well uh, as if it were integrated at source by the handset manufacturer. If uh, an OEM decides to put Ubuntu for Android on their smartphones, is it going to increase the cost of the phone? Uh, and what kind of market will there be for these kind of smartphones? Um, well, we think that there is 
demand for high-end smartphones. So particularly from enterprise users, people who see the flexibility in having full mobility of carrying a PC operating system um, uh, within, within, within their particular smartphone. So in terms of justifying, justifying what we believe the demand for this solution will be, um, at the moment there are a lot of high-end smartphones being manufactured right now. The solution that we offer is a solution that can be integrated without affecting the base cost of the current smartphone um, that are being developed. So we're not impacting the price of the smartphone um, any way at all in terms of the cost of what it takes to develop that smartphone. But what we are, what we are doing is improving the ability for the handset manufacturers um, to sell more of those smartphones and generate, and generate a higher margin from those smartphones. Um, the, 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 the solution by itself, because it's going to be embedded within a very high-end particular um, um, phones, these phones are being developed, so there is, there is a demand for those phones already. These phones will go into the enterprise market. It's just that we believe that we're now in a position where we can add further functionality to those phones that are already being, that are already about to be shipped by having this particular solution available as well. If you look at Ubuntu for Android from mobility point of view, which means that I need an HDMI monitor, I need an HDMI cable, then keyboard and mouse, it will be far more easier for me to just carry my laptop and then I won't have to worry about finding a monitor uh, at, at an airport. What do you see about that? Yeah, I mean, that is a dependency in terms of having full access to um, the desktop solution. So you do need access to a display over HDMI and, and, and a cradle. Um, that's something which, you know, we, we believe handset manufacturers will, will start to address because the demand for this particular solution will mean that the, the uh, peripherals will be available at the same time. So as this particular hardware with this solution goes to market, handset manufacturers will um, also be looking at um, making certain peripherals available, um, such as keyboards and docking cradles and um, those, th those, types, those types of items. I, I think that you know, to expect this particular solution to entirely replace every single context where it's useful to use a laptop is probably you know, not the right way in which we would choose, to go, choose the messaging for this particular product to work. But that aside, we believe that there is um, a high level of functionality and flexibility in terms of the portability of the system that we've got, and that will be very attractive to a, to a high number of business users. Can you give us some use cases or scenarios where Ubuntu for Android makes sense for enterprise customers or individuals? There, there are quite a few different scenarios where we think this might be relevant. Um, and we've been having conversations with different people here this week, actually, who have come to us and said, this is a really um, great idea for our enterprise. So um, we think high-tech industries, for example, um, high-tech companies are very, very interested in using this kind of solution. Um, so there are, it, it, it I think it depends on the particular company itself and what level of mobility that they want to, they, that they want to have available to, to their enterprise workforce. I think it also boils down to the, some individuals. Some individuals tend to be very, very mobile and, and will see this as being a very, very um, attractive solution for them. Um, it's, it's difficult to give you a, a full range of particular sort of tried and tested markets that we believe are relevant, but we think they, are, they exist. Um, and that's justified by a lot of the conversations that we've been taking place this week, particularly, as I said, with um, technology companies. Um, I also think, given you know, that we announced the service last week, we received tremendous press attention, overwhelmingly positive, um, which kind of um, justifies the fact that there is a lot of enthusiasm about this product in the market, and we believe that will translate into a high level of demand as well. I totally agree that there's a lot of excitement around Ubuntu for Android. Uh, people are excited about it. But uh, can you give us some examples where uh, Ubuntu for Android uh, offers the solutions to the problems that enterprise customers face? Or uh, can you give us some, some use cases? I think perhaps one example is um, a, uh, an executive, for example. It can, be, it, it can be regarded as being very relevant in terms of an executive context. So this, this, is, a, this is a phone that allows an executive to have access to their applications, both their, both their um, cloud-based services, both their desktop services, personal content, 
um, as well as having, you know, obviously a, a highly efficient um, mo mobile phone as well. So it's, it, I don't think that it's, it's um, I, I think that the more relevant contexts are with individuals that have a very highly mobile nature about the way that they go um, about their work. So, um, you know, sort of uh, senior managers, for example, people that want the kind of flexibility that this offers. Um, there, may, there, there will also be contexts in terms of field workforces, for example, so where um, the physical traveling weight of an of additional piece of hardware um, is something that is, um, you know, perhaps cumbersome in their, in, in, in their day to day work. So there are um, field engineers, as, as, as examples, that have also been discussed here this week as something that this solution could be adapted to, um, um, to, to work very well with. Can you tell us a bit more about how these uh, two technologies are going to work together? I mean, you have one hardware and then you have uh, a desktop OS, which is Ubuntu, and then you have a smartphone OS, which is Android, and they will be working together, and they will be running on the same processor and the same hardware at the same time. So can you explain how these two technologies uh, work together? Okay, so we have, uh, fundamentally, we're integrating it in, in, in two levels. Um, so the Linux kernel um, on this particular smartphone, for example, um, is obviously a Linux kernel. Um, Ubuntu is a very popular, the most popular Linux desktop system. So there is, um, there is a, a, a capability at, at the Linux level that enables us to work with the kernel and um, establish what we've called a shared kernel architecture. So the kernel is is able to run um, both an Android phone system and the Ubuntu operating system at the same time. So there's no virtualization taking place. This is natively two OSs running at the same time. And that's fundamentally achieved through working directly with the Linux kernel itself. Um, as we start to work with handset manufacturers, we're in a position to um, select the most effective kernel that's relevant to run both solutions as efficiently and as performant as possible. Um, and that's based on the fact that we have, you know, a kind of merging taking place between a Linux phone operating system and a Linux desktop operating system. So that's, that's the first fundamental element in terms of how the technology works. In terms of the services, as well as having the Ubuntu desktop running, as we saw, fully fledged on the desktop um, with the same level of um, the same, the same ser the services that you would expect from a, from a normal um, Ubuntu release. We've also established a number of integration points with the Android applications. So the Android system itself is completely independent of the Ubuntu system. We haven't worked on the Android system at all. We're just taking available APIs that are available from the application layer within the, um, the Android services, such as the, the dialer, the address book, the email clients, the music player and many others, and we're integrating them to make that, those services available in a pure desktop environment. So, and, that, and the user interface that we've used are standard desktop applications. So the email client I showed you is a desktop email client that has integration and synchronization with the Android email client. Um, so it's those two levels of um, integration that, that we've used to fundamentally build this, build this solution. One curiosity that I have is, are these two systems running at the same time? If yes, what kind of impact it will have on the battery life or the user experience while a user is using Android? And what happens when the phone is docked and then undocked? Um, when the phone is um, as a mobile phone, it's obviously running Android. Um, Ubuntu is not running or having any impact on either the battery life or the performance of the, of the smartphone. So. To stress again, we, the, the solution we delivered does not impact or encroach on the Android system at all. So when the phone is undocked and used as, as it should be, a mobile phone, there is nothing impacting the performance or the battery life of that phone itself um, if it has the Ubuntu for Android solution embedded within it. When the phone docks, the cradle itself is powering the phone. So again, battery life is not affected in terms of, that particular, in, in terms of docking to the phone. Um, obviously, in a desktop experience, we see a number of, uh, it, you, you can expect power to be available. 
it's quite reasonable to expect that you know when you when, when you're docking your phone, you will have power available to the phone. So there's no um, uh, no performance issues in that in that respect. In addition to that, as I said, the um, when the phone's docked, the the phone starts to boot and run two operating systems, um, both running concurrently, independently of one another, and the, the Android system is, is entirely functioning as it as it, as, as it was before. So all the phone services, all the Android services. Um, within the phone system are still very much uh, in operation. It's just that the performance, of the, the power of the phone is now focused on the desktop um, use case because it's reasonable to assume that when someone's docked the phone at a desktop, what they want is a, is a desktop experience. And so that's when the Ubuntu um, operating system um, takes precedence, if you like, in terms of um, uh, access to services. I noticed some Android applications uh, when the phone was docked. So does that mean a user will be able to use uh, Android applications while the phone is docked and you are using Ubuntu? So an another element that's integrated within the service is uh, full access to, app to Android applications. So within the application lens that I showed you, there was a, cat a, a, it's a dedicated category purely around access to Android applications. Um, so you could use Maps, you could use um, any, any, any Android application that's uh, on the phone is accessible through the Ubuntu user interface. That also includes applications that um, have been downloaded by market. So you could play Angry Birds on your desktop if that's, if that's something. There are different gaming contexts that are available. It also means that um, as, as this service starts to become better known in the market, Android developers can um, develop their applications for particular uses in the context of a, of a, of a display user interface. Um, so they, they can start to engineer um, a more richer experience into their applications because they know that a proportion of the downloads will be relevant for both um, a smartphone form factor as well as a desktop display. So that's also something that could be encouraging in terms of the Android ecosystem. Which version of Android can run or support Ubuntu for Android? Is there any kind of dependency on a, on a particular version of Android? Oh, so we, we, we've prototyped on 2.3, which is Gingerbread. Um, gingerbread is, 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 is now being superseded by Ice Cream Sandwich 4.0. So, um, but there is, there's no dependency on any particular version of Android. Um, so users can expect to see this on the very latest version of Android, and that's dependent on the particular hardware manufacturer and what's, what version they've selected to actually um, ship with. Is there any possibility of putting this solution on Android tablets as well? This, uh, well, there's, um, there isn't any plans to put it on tablet. Um, we have our own um, tablet development taking place. Um, so we will be launching um, a tablet, uh, fully fledged Ubuntu tablet, working on a, its own operating system. Um, we will be launching our own mobile OS system. Um, so you can certainly expect to see this um, it, on, our, on our mobile OS once we actually once we bring that bring that to market, um, but yes, I think there could be use cases in a tablet as well that you know we, we, we would need to think through carefully. Ubuntu is gradually becoming omnipresent. Uh, you have Ubuntu on desktop. Soon you will have Ubuntu's on your TVs, your smartphones, and tablets, and you only have this Ubuntu for Android. Uh, what kind of integration will there be? among all these Ubuntu powered devices. For example, if I am watching a movie on my Ubuntu TV and I have to go out and I want to uh, watch that movie on my tablet without interruption, uh, is that possible or is it too far-fetched to think that there will be very tight integration uh, among all these Ubuntu devices? Well, that's, that's a very challenging um, context to, to, to address for, for any um, technology company. Um, we are first and foremost a, a software organization, so um, we work with hardware manufacturers. Um, we're currently focused on working, obviously, in, in addition to our core business around um, shipping Ubuntu within uh, laptops. Um, in terms of uh, user services, we're obviously focused on smartphones. We're working on tablets, we're working on our own phone OS, we're, we're working on Ubuntu TV, as I'm sure you heard from Will. Um, how we marry all of those different services within one particular device is a very, very challenging thing to address. Um, but what we do have in terms of advantage over other systems is that um, the Linux system is perhaps the most flexible and 
most easiest basis with which you would look to enable each of those services and support them on one device. I can't think of another system that could do it anywhere as well as Linux. Um, so that would, I think, put us in a quite strong position to be able to work with people that want to deliver those, those kind of services, which we obviously we, we, you know, we, we want to do.